Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and you're in for a treat, because I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite classic films of the 80s, a film that just recently celebrated its 30th anniversary, and of course, we moan for the passing of one of the greatest creators of all time, who's also an actor, a director, and a writer. Yeah, that's right. Carol Ramis, because I'm going to be reviewing this classic right here that I have in the palm of my hands. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! Yes. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! Yeah, this has been one of my favorite films as a kid during my childhood days. I always enjoy watching the first two films ever since. I even love watching the cartoon called The Real Ghostbusters, as well as um, reading the comics. And I even had a, a lunch pail and um, a Halloween bucket of Ghostbusters. Hell, I used to um, own a lot of stuff uh, back in the day before they all got lost. Sadly, yeah. I wish I could own notes, uh, classic stuff again. Actually, I always wanted to own the uh, the famous uh, Ecto-1 Ghostbusters mobile that they used in the movie. Yeah, the Ecto-1. Such a classic uh, car. But this movie is definitely the film that I would definitely love to watch over and over and over again. But this is, of course, the... Uh, the double feature gift set that I've owned since 2006. And it's been eight years since I've owned this as a birthday gift. It has the first two films and the scrapbook included. Yes. And of course I have a card of a magazine called The Giant. <laughs> yeah, sorry I had some difficulties with getting the scrapbook out of there in, in the gift set, but here it is. Here's the scrapbook with the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, the front and the back. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. I'm not going to uh, take everything out of there, but that's okay. Um, I just want to show you what it looks like. And here's the, um, the first two films, Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Yeah. I enjoyed the second movie, though. I thought it served its purpose. Yeah, this is the back. Um, spines. It's a great thing to own as a gift set. But I really enjoyed it a lot. So I'm just going to try to put them back in. So let's get right to it with the very first film, Ghostbusters. It stars Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, so Bernie Weaver, Harold Ramis, Rick Moranis, Annie Potts, William Efferson, and Ernie Hudson. It's written by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis and is directed by Ivan Reitman. The movie begins when three scientists, Dr. Peter Bankman, Dr. Raymond Stance, and Dr. Egon Spangler, had attended at a Columbia University in New York City. Unfortunately, once their grant has expired, they were kicked out and fired from the university and decided to go into business as a ghost extermination company called Ghostbusters. Their first customer is an orchestra cello player named Dana Barrett, who was scared out of her apartment on the 22nd floor of a high-rise apartment building on Central Park West. It seems that Dana's neighbor also, Louis Tully, is also affected by ghosts around on the apartment building. Armed with the proton guns and their pack, the Ghostbusters became very popular by going against all the ghosts out there including the green ghost named Slimer. Part of their popularity they were joined in with another Ghostbuster named Winston Zedmore, 
It was played by Ernie Hudson. So he was looking for the job as well to get paid. That, along with the secretary, you know, Janine Minitz, who was played by Annie Potts. Unfortunately, the overzealous Environmental Protection Agency, also known as EPA, their agent, Walter Peck, yeah, the guy who has no dick, who's played by William Afferson, thinks that the Ghostbusters themselves are fraud and they're trying to give people the benefit of the doubt, try to throw them out of jail because of that one experiment that just went completely wrong by shutting off the power. Yeah, and all the ghosts that decided to shoot up up the air is what caused the explosion. So, so once they got out of jail, they went up to the mayor of New York City to talk about what's going on until they finally decided to work together to stop these ghosts from harming everybody that's inside the city. So once the Sumian god named Guzer the Guzerian was challenged through the apartment building that Dana and Lewis had lived in, they came around to face Gozier, and that's when things go completely wrong when when one of them had chose the state puff Marshmallow Man to appear inside of New York City. So it's up to the Ghostbusters to stop them. And it was definitely one of the best movies I've ever seen as a kid. And I always enjoy them. I wish I had all the merchandising as a kid. Hell, I would have loved to wear the proton pack with the proton gun that I had. But not only that though, I like to have the Ecto-1 mobile to drive in <laughs> and join the group as the Ghostbusters team to stop those crazy ghosts no matter what. Yeah, it's just such a funny movie, hilarious, and you just never get tired of watching it. This movie sure had a lot of funny moments in this and I just couldn't <laughs> I just couldn't stop laughing at it. But there was one scene where you know when Peter Bankman was about to be slime by Slimer. Yeah, the green ghost. <laughs> and he says, He slimed me. <laughs> yeah. And then there's one scene when the Ghostbusters team went to go meet the mayor and after they got out of jail, thanks to <laughs> Dickless here, you know, Walter Peck. Yeah, Peter <laughs> Mayor says, Is this true? Peter Bickman says, Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. Jeez! <laughs> oh man. I, I can go on and on all day. And it's just... <laughs> it's just hilarious. I really did enjoy this movie a lot. I always get a kick out of those characters too. Um, I always love Peter Bankman too. He's, you know, Bill Murray. And he's always you know, hilarious uh, as he is. Um, Dan Aykroyd too was awesome as uh, Ray Stance because you know, yeah, he's the creator by the way along with Harold Ramis now Harold Ramis though God rest his soul he definitely put heart to this movie since he was the creator along with uh, Dan Aykroyd they, they definitely you know created Ghostbusters to the extreme is one of the best written scripts that they have ever done and I gotta say I give totally good credit to those two guys because they were the best especially Harold Ramis you know, he, he's always one of the best writers creators and actors too and, you know in fact he is very underrated as an actor um, and he's a very great director uh, when it comes to movies like Groundhog's Day and and many others. You know, it's such a great treat to see him. In fact, he was the most intelligent one of all when he got to play the role as Egon Spengler. I also read, though, that originally Peter Bankman was going to be played by John Belushi. You know, originally, though. But it went to Bill Murray, of course. Actually, it would have been really cool to see John Belushi in that role if he was still alive at the time. In fact, it would have been awesome, too. Yeah, sure will, because then you'll have 
once again, John Belushi teaming up with Dan Aykroyd after the Blues Brothers and <laughs> Neighbors, the most underrated film I've ever seen. I, I really love this movie a lot. I enjoy this film. I would watch this every freaking day. Yeah. <laughs> I also love Rick Moranis in this movie too. Yeah, he was uh, <laughs> hilarious. Uh, comic relief if you want to have that. And uh, Sigourney Weaver, you know, coming from all the Alien movies, you know, she was very good in Ghostbusters. I think she definitely worked so well for that role. This movie had been parodied a lot too. In fact, uh, if you saw the movie Be Kind Be Wine, they actually did do a parody of Ghostbusters. <laughs> I thought that was clever because considering that the VHS tape was all, you know, magnetized. <laughs> oh man, I, I just love this movie so much. I thought the second movie was actually very good too. I mean, it wasn't as good as the first film, I'll give you that. But I really enjoyed it for what it was worth because there were some funny moments in that movie that I really, you know, never get tired of. But Ghostbusters is the only film that you just want to watch it over and over and over again. While the second movie, I would probably just watch it any time whenever I feel like it. <laughs> I'll probably just watch it like, you know, a couple times, you know, you know just to set my mood straight. Because they're still funny. But Ghostbusters is the best of them all. So definitely, you know, for its 30th anniversary, if you get a chance, Buy the movie, DVD, Laserdisc, VHS tapes, beta tapes, Blu-ray, yes, including the 4K version, which has no extras, but that's okay. You still want to own it anyway. And get the cartoon as well, the comics, and maybe get a chance to watch Extreme Ghostbusters if you must, which I wasn't much of a big fan, but that's okay, because... It's still Ghostbusters to me. Definitely get a chance to watch it. You'll just never get tired of it. And already there are in development on making the third movie to Ghostbusters. Well, even though prior to Harold Ramis' passing, I gotta say, maybe I'll take my chances to see the third movie if that movie ever gets made. And also, I forgot to mention the video games too. Yeah, get. If you have like a PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and all the rest, definitely buy the video game. Even if you didn't own those consoles, that's okay. It'll be a real treat. I do agree that the NES games are not as good. Well, with the exception of Ghostbusters 2, but that's okay. <laughs> but I'll give them credit, at least that the first Ghostbusters video game had the music. It's just the game itself sucks. <laughs> well... That's my review. So anyway, I give Ghostbusters five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. And also, stay tuned for Ghostbusters 2, which I'm going to review as well. Bye.